Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The regular season Nexus Gaming Series Season 6, it is over. And we are here into the first round of the playoffs. Division C East. The found Vikings, the number one seed. The team with the best record in the regular season. Versus Wood League, the team that was fighting tooth and nail up to the very last game to make sure that they were here to battle for bragging rights here in these playoffs. So let's take a quick look at the standings. How did we get here? Well, that's how right there. Found Vikings at the top. 20 map wins, 7 map losses. Wood League coming in at number 8. Right around 500. 13 map wins, 14 map losses. And here's our brackets uh, for the first uh, couple rounds as well. We have both of our teams ready to go. We have Infernal Shrines for game number one, which was the choice of the found Vikings. Told the teams we're ready, and let's get this show on the road. So what's the mentality like when you're an eight seed facing a one seed? Well, I can tell you a lot about that, because that's the team, or the position my team is in. Uh, you you got to believe and uh, really not have any pressure on you. I think that's the big thing. you really got nothing to lose. Most teams um, aren't expecting you to upset the number one seed. They are the number one seed for a reason, after all. I'm pulling up real quick how these two teams squared off in the regular season. What did that, uh, how did that matchup go? There it is. So it's actually a two to one, which means, uh, Wood League, they, they have to feel like they're they're in a good place if you took a... And this is later in the season, so you took a game off these guys later in the season when they were toward the top of the standing. So Wood League, got to be feeling good. Um, and really, if they manage to kind of snake this game one away, then you're going to be feeling really good going into game two. So uh, I, I in my opinion, my unbiased opinion, I've casted um, a lot of divisions this season. Oh my goodness, you guys aren't going to get sound because I am terrible. So let me fix that while we go into draft here. There we go. Now you guys will have sound. First banana, banana, the old banana. Coming out by Wood League, and it's my favorite band, so I love seeing that. Anna is super aggravating. And Asmodan, also another super aggravating hero, banned out by uh, the found Vikings. And this draft is just flying along. Mephisto, targeted ban, I would guess, toward the found Vikings. What I started to say before I got interrupted with my own sound issues, uh, I've casted a lot of these divisions this season, and in my humble, unbiased opinion, Sea East has actually been the most fun, most competitive, most intriguing one to watch. And if there's going to be an 8-1 to one upset, I think this is the division that's most likely to be so. Not because the Found Vikings aren't a deserving number one seed, they most certainly are, but because of just how close and how competitive this division has been throughout the seasons, top and bottom through the standings, these teams have taken games off of each other up and down the standings um garrosh first pick high priority on the garrosh anubarak still on the board diablo still on the board lots of tanks for vikings to respond with i would love and they go with the johanna alex alex straza johanna's really nice into the garrosh because he can kind of just hug her uh johanna can hug garrosh and with the Unstoppable, get himself out of trouble. Make it so Garrosh can't throw anybody but Johanna. What I would have liked to have seen, 
maybe instead of the Alexstrasza uh, is a Jaina. Jaina can keep the slow on the Garrosh and really, really makes it difficult for Garrosh to do his job uh, with the slow on him. So um, if if she's still up, I would really like to see the Found Vikings I heed the voice of take you. a Jaina. Uh, but Woodley taking an Arthas and a Tehran. So a lot of lockdown there with Arthas and Tehran uh, to combine with a big front line of Garrosh and Arthas. Wood League is actually hiding their damage. So are, uh, is that a sign that they're uh, flexible in what they want? Or are they hiding something? We'll see. Orphea banned out. I like that ban. I really don't like playing against a good Orphea. Orphea is one of those high floor, high ceiling hero. She's tough to play, but when she's played well, she is really, really, really strong. So an Alarak banned by the Wood League to respond to the Orphea banned by the Found Vikings. Azul yeah, rules in chat. Could not have picked a noob Jaina fast enough there. I'm kind of with you, to be honest. Um, I would have loved to have seen a Nubarak Jaina there. But instead, we're going to see Hanzo coming out by the Found Vikings and Blaze. So the Blaze can um, actually serve a pseudo-similar purpose to the Jaina with respect to the Garrosh. Um, if you take the increased oil size and you kind of throw those oils where Garrosh has to engage through... Keeping that slow on the Garrosh makes it much more difficult for him to uh, do his thing. But speaking of Jaina, we're going to get a Jaina and a Zeratul. So I really like what Wood League is cooking here. This is an absolutely terrifying composition. You have a front line with a Garrosh Arthas, both of which are oh so difficult to kill. You have the VP, APOC. Taunt on top of it, Starfall, all kinds of Wombo possibilities coming out for the Wood League. And it's going to be a last pick Malthiel. So, solo ranged assassin Hanzo, solo ranged assassin Jaina, Malthiel, um, they could use that to double soak. Uh, they can use that to help counter with last rites, the Garrosh and the Arthas. Uh, so really nice pick here on that mouthfeel, and uh, let's see how these teams do here in game one C East playoffs number one seed and number eight seed I muted the mic there for like a, a sneeze that would never come. <laughs> but here we are, loading in to our game number one, Found Vikings and the Wood League. Um, I don't know about you fabulous people in chat, but I really like Wood League's draft um, a little bit better than I do that of the found vikings i think it's just going to be a little bit easier to execute uh, but both teams have a lot of beef i mean there's a big front line hard to kill heroes here and we didn't really touch on the alexstrasza but let, let's touch on that after we introduce our two teams the blue team the number one seed in sea east the found vikings contender on mouthfield E.T. Jim on Johanna, Sailor Sky on Tehran, Cyan on Hanzo, and Dicky on Blaze. And I love the Wonder William synergy. Poor Malthiel didn't get the facts. The red team, number eight seed, Woodley, J-Mac on Garrosh, Droopy 
on Zeratul Rabbi on Taronda Oryx on Arthas and I missed Jaina whereas there is Cavlor on the Jaina. So we didn't even touch on the Alex. Um, what Alex does on Infernal Shrines, uh, one of her battle ba better battlefields, nice dismount there by uh, PT Jim playing Johanna. What Alex Straza does on Infernal Shrines, uh, which is why it's one of her better battlefields, is she shortens the objective. If you get that objective to, you know, 25, 30 or so, you can pop that Dragon Queen and that objective is over. There is a flip taunt on the Malfield Zeratul there to follow up. The team is a little bit late. It but they do secure first blood. Droopy forced to limp away. Aggressive rotation by JMAC getting the mouthfeel. And first blood over to Woodley. So Alex Straza will be a factor here. Uh, it means Woodley absolutely 100% cannot be late to these objectives. Uh, both because Alex Straza will shorten the objective. And also because... Uh, the Found Vikings objective burn is is just a little a little bit better. Uh, Johanna plays mouth. Uh, not that Wood Leagues is bad, uh, but Vikings uh, a little bit stronger. As uh, Zeratul eats a uh, sonic arrow to the forehead. <laughs> Don't see that happen a whole lot. Both sides secure their mid camps almost simultaneously. Uh, Zeratul's already rotating, cleared out. Uh, Malthiel is starting on the bottom camp and then decides better of it. In the meantime, let's not ignore our solo laners. How are these guys doing? It looks like Korix forced Dickie back to tap there. So early advantage Korix lane pushed far in. So much so that Arthas is actually rotating away to the mid lane here. Here comes Arthas, unable to hit the Howling Blast, but they do have Malthiel locked down for now. Alex Straza throwing that healing circle down. Everybody now at full health. 30 seconds to our first objective. Vikings are going to the top lane bruisers. No response from Woodley yet. So they will have uh, the found Vikings with a little bit of a macro advantage in the top lane. Uh, but Woodley actually is responding to the bottom lane. So a little bit further from the objective. And they do have a very small remnant of this camp still mid. It should clear itself out. There it goes. So bottom lane push for Woodley. Top lane push for Vikings. Both teams going to be here at about the same time with the same level. Which team will blink first? So Vikings conceding the objective position, sending Hanzo and Malfiel into the bottom lane to clear out the camp. Wood League is jumping on the objective. They're going to get probably close to 20, maybe even a little more by the time the found Vikings works their way up here. Malfiel just now working his way up here. Arthas is in the top lane. Wood League will have to back up for now. A Lunar Flare interrupts the Jet Propulsion. Groundbreaker does not hit everybody, but J-Mac isolated out, taking some free mouthfeel damage. Arthas and Zera sharking around the flank, and now things are going to get real. Both teams move in the three-man Groundbreaker coming out by J-Mac. There is a huge Blizzard. Dragon Queen popped. However, Korix is so low, and he is able to get away with less than 100 health. Wood League needs to back up, tap, wait out Dragon Queen, and re-engage. They are so close, but they do have time. They don't need to rush this, um, assuming Korex has tap. There is the uh, toss to keep Dicky out of the healing, and Dicky is going to go down. However, Found Vikings are able to trade Blaze out for the first John Cena of the game, Frozen Punisher barreling down the mid lane. So it looks like it's actually going to be Zeratul that's going to pull him over. Uh, no support um, on the Punisher from the Found Vikings. Instead, they sent all four members to the top lane. So Wood League is going to get a lot of extra soak in the bottom until Blaze marks his way down there. They're not going to get a whole lot of value out of this John Cena. Uh, in the top lane, though, prepping for what is a 50% chance of being the next objective, they have already eliminated this wall. So... Possibly in a, a, an astute thinking ahead little macro play from the Vikings if the next objective happens to spawn here in this top lane. So two kills to none in favor of Wood League. However, they did lose the first objective. Um, they're, you know, got a couple towers taken down here and there. 
Um, and the XP is pretty much dead even. So very little to separate these teams um, thus far here in the first five to six minutes of this game. Once again, camps secured at exactly the same time for both teams, really mirroring each other. Uh, Jaina and Arthas, though, might be in trouble. A Lunar Flare comes out to peel, and Arthas is going to get out barely one more time. In the meantime, on the backside, Zeratul is really harassing Alex Straza. They get Malfield, they might get Alex. Hanzo's damage is enough for now to drive the Zeratul away, but Droopy did a fantastic job of really harassing that Alex Straza, completely forcing her out of that fight, unable to offer any heals and support. Once again, Malfield goes down. So team fighting um, a little bit in favor here of our number eight seeded Woodley. So Wood League will win the race to level 10 and to the advantage of the found Vikings, uh, like I suggested after they went ahead and took their uh, damage to the top lane, the next objective will spawn in the top lane. Level 10's here for both sides. For the Wood League, we have Ring of Frost, Shadowstalk, Warlord's Challenge, Void Prison, and Arthas is being a little bit cheeky. He's not showing. I assume we're going to go Army of the Dead with how much pressure Arthas has been under, but he is not showing yet. The flip side, the Founds Vikings, uh, Last Rites, Bunker Drop, that is Life Binder. Uh, instead of Cleansing Flame, Johanna gets flipped, however, the last right's going to secure Garrosh. Fantastic counter engage. Zeratul landed a VP on the back, but there is nobody there to follow up. And it is Summon Cindergosa does follow up. Bunker drop there. Probably unnecessary is without Garrosh. There is not a lot Wood League is going to do. The flip side of that, though, the death timers are pretty short. Garrosh will likely be up in time to contest this if he gets up quickly. Uh, we also have, of course, Dragon Arrow as seen on the Garrosh kill and Blessed Shield as well. So both teams making their way up here. The Found Vikings this time will have advantage. Uh, about 20 by the time Woodleg makes it up here, maybe even more. Zeratul going in, nice harass, forces out the Dragon Queen, and now decision time for Woodleg. Do you fight into Dragon Queen, or do you... That is a Ring of Frost catches two. Zeratul on the Alex Straza one more time. However, the health bars for Wood League are going down much faster uh, than they are for the Found Vikings. They're also, as a kind of a result of uh, auxiliary damage or accidental damage off the side, they actually were able to secure the little Shrine Monkeys and secure the Arcane Punisher pushing down the top lane. No wall to hide behind this time. And that's what Alex Straza does. Once they got to 25, 26, they popped Dragon Queen, and Wood League had a tough decision. They either fight into Dragon Queen. Oh, that was a mistake. Oh, you cannot let John Cena get on you outside the wall. Uh, found Viking is there to follow up and punish, letting John Cena initiate for them. And uh, another kill there coming out. For the found Vikings, Garrosh might be in trouble. They are tanking, though, as there are no minions in here. Uh, that was a very close thing. One of the things I harped on my guys all the time for a long, long time is, uh, is the Punisher there. There never is a reason for anybody to eat that jump. Only one person should eat that jump. And Woodley really almost paid for it there. They got caught by the John Cena elbow drop outside the wall. And then they got caught, uh, three of them, on the follow-up after that. There's a, a little bit of a rhythm to that Punisher where you kind of get a sense for when it's about ready to jump again. And you really have to scatter to make sure only one person, ideally your tank, eats that jump from John Cena there. But still three kills to two, very close game. Uh, structurally, the Found Vikings are certainly ahead. They're also up about a full level. 
courtesy of securing both of the objectives so far this game. Now Zeratul is bushing here. Malthiel is not here. There goes the Zera. There's the VP. Blaze actually jet propulsion into it. There's the Ring of Frost with Summon Syndragosa. Hanzo goes down real fast. Now they do have the uh, bunker there. They get a counter kill on the Zeratul. Groundbreaker catches one. So that is three, four, five heroics uh, on the side of Woodleg, only to unfortunately secure the Hanzo. And that's going to be the value of that bunker drop. If uh, they get the VP on top of that, Blaze just calls down that bunker and he can eat um, a lot of that damage. So a one for one. Team's posturing, waiting for the next objective, which will be mid again. It's been mid, top, mid. I imagine we will see Wood League rotate <clears throat> onto their top lane bruisers uh, at about the time this objective is starting. In the meantime, Found Vikings are here in the bottom lane. Gonna get some free pressure. Uh, can get at least one tower, probably both. If uh, Wood League doesn't respond to this, there's one, there's two. Uh, they're going to step up more. Now, Garrosh is here to show some presence, but he is by himself, so he's got to play very carefully. Now, the rest of the members of the Wood League are coming to reinforce Zeratul and Malthiel, both on the backside. So everybody here is present and accounted for in a little pre-objective fight. There goes the Zeratul harassment. Blinks in, blinks out, hits his cleave. And now both sides will rotate away to the objective. Uh, macro pressure will be on the side of Wood League here as they did secure the top camp. Also same tier. So our Viking is going to clear out, wait for 16. Are they going to just jump in with, with 15 here? I really want to see Burton. No, they're going to try to force this same tier. Now Taronda is a little further behind. Zeratul is checking the bush. Does go on the Johanna, misses the Singularity Spike. But they do force Bound Vikings off of the Bruisers. And Malthiel goes to clear top. Wood League starting on the objective. Uh, but they lost some time before Vikings gets to 16. So we'll see if they're going to pay for that or not. Vikings, they are stepping in without 16. So here we go. This might be the objective fight that Wood League needs to turn this game around. Uh, blinked in and out by Zara, constantly harassing that back line. A big root catches two, followed up by the groundbreaker. No follow-up after that. Team still posturing. Uh, 21 Shrine Monkeys for Wood League. There's the VP. There's the Ring of Frost on top. It catches two. Two of them go. Hanzo goes. Alex Straza goes. Taunt holding Blaze in place. He is then thrown into the entirety of the Wood League team. They might get Garrosh, but that armor is really chunking in there. Malthiel goes down. Johanna very likely to follow, and she does. Brilliantly executed VP. Ring of Frost, Bunker notwithstanding, they turn it into a four for naught, secure the objective, and that was really the moment that the Wood League needed to kind of break the momentum of this game. They were so close in a number of instances to making something happen, but unable to do so. Now starting to even up the structures a little bit. Uh, the Mortar Punisher is the best Punisher for siege damage. It's about half health, jumps in over the wall, I imagine if you're Wood League, you're only going to get the outer wall hill. Really not much more. Zeratul is already prepping the top lane. I wonder if they're going to uh, take their losses now and rotate top to help Zeratul or just get more soak and camp. Looks like soak and camp for the Wood League. Now Zeratul, oh, hung out a little too long. He needs to get out of here like right now, and he does. He actually took a uh, tower shot there. So uh, Lady Momentum switching her jerseys there on our third objective. Uh, Wood League taking the momentum back and completely evening out this game. It's almost even structurally. It's completely even in level. Macro advantage on the side of Wood League a little bit. And they have to know that the Lost Vikings are here. Uh, Blaze is showing in the mid. Owl now shows that they're, they, Wood League, are going to step up. Yes, no. They were hesitant, they thought about it, but I think they were a little weary of those bushes there. Uh, didn't pull the trigger. And uh, now they'll rotate away and they're gonna have to deal with top lane here soon. Um, and this is a great spot for Vikings. As soon as the Wood League shows in the top, oh, I would like to see them stay here. Look at this fort. 
Um, you could force this fort when somebody from Woodlake shows in the top lane. Instead, they're going to rotate to the mid, clean up the mercenaries. And uh, this is going to be the calm before the storm. Uh, both of these teams kind of just doing a little map maintenance right now. Waiting for the next objective, and the next objective is going to be a big one. Um, it is going to be the first bottom lane objective, um, so it will be more damaging to the Wood League if they lose it, um, as these structures are already low. Found Vikings stepping in again. Now, Jaina and Arthas are not here. This is what I wanted Found Vikings to do. Unless Wood League is here as a team, they have zero chance to defend it. Nice call there by the Found Vikings, opening up some opportunities. Uh, you can see their structures are a lot healthier in the bottom lane. So Wood League really needs to win this next objective or you could see a keep going down for them. And uh, Found Viking is figuring they're up on that camp. Dickie anchoring this bush and they're just going to go ahead and take out the front wall and back up as soon as they arrive. Really good play. Uh, nice map manipulation there by uh, Vikings. I actually would have kind of maybe liked to have seen Woodley possibly hold that top camp um, till about 10 seconds from now. So it's pushing at the same time the camp is up. Now Vikings will have a chance to go up there and clear it out and get most of the way back down here. So maybe a little bit too early on the secure of the camp. So they're only going to get a little bit of a lead here. Found Vikings back on their way. Sonic Arrow to scout out. They see everybody but Zara. Stepping in are the Vikings. Zara is sharking around on the backside. He's looking for that VP. Alex Straza is way, way back. Look how far back she's in. Great space in here by Found Vikings, really making sure they don't set it up. A Dragon Queen popped way, way early in response to that Zara tool. He's actually forced to VP defensively. Ring of Frost, there it goes. They do catch Hanzo one more time. He is absolutely exploded. If they can keep Garrosh up, they will be in a great spot, but he's so low, forced to throw defensively. Arthas actually goes down on the counter engage, then Malthiel as well. Healing circle under all of this is going to be huge for the found Vikings. So far, a two for two, but the health bars on the found Vikings are so much stronger. A two for two. However, with 30 to 32, 34, soon going to be 40 shrine monkeys for the found Vikings, they have secured this. So many of these team fights have been really, really close. Um, but but Vikings, they keep finding a way to secure the objective in the course of the team fight, so they don't have to do it afterwards, and you saw it happen there. The team fight was over. It was a two for two. And you look down at the Shrine Monkey scorecard, and the, wood, the found Vikings, I should say, have that thing pretty much locked up. So how far do they want to push this Frozen Punisher? Are they going to take out the bottom keep? And I think that's got to be your goal here if you're the found Vikings. I know you don't have Hanzo. Here comes the Dragon Arrow from way downtown, like slow motion, actually catches two. And he picks play of the game at just the right time. What a fantastic play by Cyan on the Hanzo. Uh, this bottom keep is 100% going down. I don't think they can get much more than that out of the bottom lane. As Zara actually goes onto Hanzo and John Cena says, no, sir, jumps right onto the Zara tool. Found Vikings follow up. Taunt goes on to Blaze, who is under the uh, keep. They do try to time it out with the uh, bunker expiring, but oh my god, what an absolute brawl. Fighting under John Cena is just not doing the Wood League any favors, but these structures are here, pounding away at the Found Vikings. Neither team can kill each other yet. There goes John Cena on to two more. That's going to be a member of... Uh, Woodley falling. It's going to be Jaina. Shields on the core are down, but the health bars from the Found Vikings are so low. Arthas goes down. Lunar Flare does not hit. Woodley trying desperately to keep this game one alive, but I do not think it's going to happen. Tyrande goes down. Game one in a really fantastic game goes over to the found Vikings. I really think that game was uh, 
was that objective clear? Just Woodley couldn't quite keep up with it. And even when these team fights were happening on the objectives, uh, found Vikings found a way to secure the objective in the course of these team fights. And I mean, look at the kills: ten to nine, uh, and and three of those kills for the found Vikings were actually on the core at the end. So up to that point, it was something like ten to ten to six or ten to seven. So the Wood League was was securing the kills at a higher rate than the found Vikings were. Uh, but the wave clear on the shrines was so good uh, that Wood League was only able to secure the one. And that was on the back of the fantastic Wombo combo at the mid-objective. So we're going to take a quick breather before we go to game two. But hang tight. Should only be probably a minute or so. We'll be right back. All right, I told you it wouldn't be long. Game two. We're going to Dragonshire. And it looks like this is going to be a... This is going to be Wood League's choice of map. So uh, coming off the loss in game one, hard-fought loss in game one. They decided to go with map pick here for game number two. You know, I think if you're Wood League, um, despite the loss, uh, you're not feeling outclassed here. I, I don't feel that Bound Vikings uh, took the heart out of them or anything. That was a really close fought, hard contested game from both. Um, Maybe the macro for the found Vikings a little bit stronger, but but I, I wouldn't I don't think it out of the realm of possibility at all here for Wood League to get up off the map. And uh, just as game one was, I expect game two here to be a a really entertaining matchup as well. All right, so just waiting for uh, both teams to hit that R button. We can jump into our game two draft. I think there were a, there was enough good play on specific heroes that I think the drafters for both of these sides are gonna have some tough choices to make when they're deciding on their bands because there was a lot of good stuff in those. Uh, the the Zara play was pretty strong. The Jaina play was pretty strong. Uh, all around, I thought everyone on both teams played pretty solid. It'll be interesting to see what the teams themselves felt like was the issue, because you can usually see that 
um, in some of the bands, when you start seeing these teams adjust to the in series meta and ban out heroes they don't want to see. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, who found Vikings thought was the biggest problem from Woodley and vice versa. Hey, Jay, thanks for the raid, my friend. And welcome, everyone, from, I believe, another Sea East matchup, right? To game two of the Found Vikings versus Wood League, the number one seed, Found Vikings, number eight seed, Wood League. Game one was a really fun match. Uh, Found Vikings uh, pulled off a pretty competitive match, uh, despite the fact that Wood League actually outkilled their opponents uh, there by a little bit. And here we are, going to be game two at Dragonshire. All right, so it looks like we have the thumbs up from both sides. Hopefully somebody will press that start game button here in just a minute. Now, Dragonshire, a little bit of a different animal than Infernal Shrines. There's no single objective phase that pulls everybody to the center of the map or pulls everybody to the bottom of the map. You know, it's all about uh, map control, rotations, controlling the solo lane, manipulating the map for pressure, because you got to secure so many points simultaneously to secure um, the Dragon Knight. So <laughs> Rexar is one of those heroes uh, since his little uh, change a little bit ago. But on battlegrounds like uh, Braxis or Dragonshire where one lane is so important, Rexar is really annoying. And I, I don't mind that ban at all. Uh, and there's the Garrosh. So that was the adjustment from the Found Vikings. Garrosh was a problem they felt in game one. Banning out Rexar, banning out Garrosh, and a ban coming out for the Wood League. I mentioned it at the start of game one. I do not like playing against Anna. I love seeing her banned. And Kael'thas, banned game num or a banned in that second slot ban. And Diablo, that's a hero that, uh, if uh, my mind functions properly we well, made it through the entire first draft untouched and then here in game two on dragonshire first picked the by the found vikings and on the flip side a new and Rhaegar picked up i think a new might be the best all around tank right now so love seeing that pick uh, but diablo also really strong particularly on dragonshire one of those maps that were the rotations between mid and bot lane there's all kinds of stuff for him to slam people into Stukov picked up by the Found Vikings one more. And gonna be Hanzo again. Scion back on the Hanzo. And uh, uh, Scion actually made a really nice play at the end with the uh, dragon arrow from all the way back at the core. It managed to hit Garrosh and Jaina on the keep defense and then uh, play of the game right back into the uh, cut down on that rotation time and I'm, I'm sure made an impact on that game winning drive there for the found vikings alarak mid band again by the woodley gotta be a targeted ban and then the asmo band coming out again for the found vikings So two picks for the Woodley. Let's see who they're gonna pick to form the meat, the bulk of their comp, and it's gonna be Poke City, Leeming and Junkrat, long range poke, both pretty squishy. But with Junkrat, a lot of um, a lot of wave clear, displacement, long range poke. And Leeming can be good. 
but you have to get value out of her resets. If you're not resetting Leeming, uh, you're not going to get a lot of value out of her. Love, love those picks. From the Vikings, Greymane is going to give them so much ability to burn the mercenaries all over the map. To Haka with the global, a nice solo laner. Let's see who the Wood League responds with, but I really like the Found Vikings comp here. It's really kind of meat and potatoes, standard, strong, does everything pretty well without a glaring weakness. It's got good good enough wave clear, good damage, good initiation, strong on the front line, uh, good map presence. And Wood League going to respond with the Leoric. Leoric can, can struggle a bit into the Dahaka because uh, Dahaka can simply burrow away the uh, Drain Hope, the spooky ghost hand from Leoric. And when you're playing Leoric in the solo lane, so much of your value comes out of if you can hit, hit your W, you gotta hit the Drain Hope if you're playing Leoric in the solo. Um, and when you can, and you can keep him in there or zone it off, Leoric can be a lane bully, uh, but Tahaka can avoid that with the uh, Burrow. So let's see how that top lane matchup goes. Um, and if you play the Tahaka right, you can uh, force invades on the lower mid and lower lane mercenaries as well. Now I will say, no advantage given. I'll show you guys this. For a portrait synergy, the found Vikings rocking the carpet found Vikings fantastic. And uh, wood league rocking, I think that's a, a horde war banner. It's got the thrall little thing, but it Kind of looks like a, like a House Stark war banner almost with the wolf on there. All right, game number two. Heroes Found Vikings, our blue team, trying to force their way into the Division East semifinals. PJ Tim. And I think I called him PT Jim all of game one. So my apologies to BJ, PJ Tim on Diablo, Contender on Greymane, Sailor Sky on Stukov, Cyan back on Hanzo, Dicky playing Dahaka. The Red Team, the Wood League, JMac on Anubarek, Droopy on Junkrat, Rabbi on Rhaegar, Kavlor on Leeming, and Korix on Leoric. And unfortunately, I hate to say it, Korix is playing Leoric wrong because he's not in the janitor skin. That is not a good start to the game for the found Vikings. So a little bit of a bush party here, trying to find somebody, and now they are rotating around the backside to try to get the well. A little bit of well cheese. They're going to use the beetles. I don't think this well gets out of this. It is gone. So that will be a strong advantage for the solo lane for, for the found Vikings. A cheeky little initiation play there. Um, despite the fact that he's not Janitor Leoric, uh, Woodley getting off to a, a strong start. I'm going to say Woodley won the first 45 seconds of this game. I agree with you, Warhammer. I think uh, Found Vikings won draft two, but you got to execute. Um, and a, uh, a well placed cocoon, to making it a five on four. Or the ability to get some leaming resets can turn these fights uh, around real fast. So let's see how this goes. Both sides jumping on their giants almost instantaneously. Nobody needs to help Greyman there. They just need to leave him be to go ahead and grab that. So just like in game one, here in game two, giants going to be dra grabbed at pretty close to the same time. Cyan eating a face full of ore. And let's go check on the top lane. So, so far, Leoric is actually uh, really pushing into Dicky here. Um, and that's going to get even harder for Dahaka past four when Leoric picks up Neil Presence. And Nubarak taking a, a fair amount of poke. Diablo as well. Nice zoning, lurking arm there. Uh, both points secured by the Wood League. Found Vikings kind of had to bully their way in there. Dahaka actually had to rotate away to mid to make sure that uh, Wood League didn't secure the uh, DK. Uh, but Hanzo and Diablo were very low. 
and Woodley is winning these trades right now in the bottom lane, courtesy of a lot of Junkrat Poke and Li Ming Poke. If they get Grey Mane here, that's going to be a reset. Uh, pop in the Pustule is Stukov to make sure that big heal comes out. But for the second time in two minutes, all of the objectives are secured by the Woodley. Now, Leo and Dahaka are brawling in the mid. As long as it's just the two of them, Woodley will not be able to secure this point. But this is a long brawl here. Anubrak is isolated. His burrow charge to safety, but that's going to signal the retreat for the Woodley. Uh, J-Mac can't hang around with that low life, especially with Greymane. You know, Greymane, when he's in ranged mode, can kind of do the Rainer thing and just chunk out Anubrak by auto-attacking him over and over and over again. But J-Mac showing no fear, saying, Mana, health, I don't need those. Completely overrated. I'm going to step onto this point. All right, now while we have a little break from this, let's go check in on the top lane. So two solo laners kind of ignoring each other, clearing out the waves. Leoric gonna, looks like, double soak? No. Back up to the top. He's gonna make sure Dahaka does not take this. Uh, but in the meanwhile, we have another brawl going on in the bottom lane. Uh, worth noting, Diablo doesn't have the soul shield at one, so he can't intentionally eat the leaming orbs. J-Mac is in trouble, though. Body blocked, and down he will go. Um, I think the lack of mana finally came to be there. Found Vikings really hanging in there, uh, despite uh, getting beaten up in the early part of that skirmish, but pick it up. And Hanzo might get Junkrat, and he does. So two unanswered kills for the found Vikings. Now, if the Auric keeps getting full value Drain Hopes, the Haka is going to have a hard time. But Greymane comes up. Wood League is around to contest the channel. 3-2 to two here in the mid. Junkrat is just now spawning, so he's going to be a little bit late. Let's see if the Vikings can do anything with this. Not quite yet. Now Junkrat is here. The poke is going to make it nearly impossible for the found Vikings to finish this. Tongue does land onto a noob, as does the uh, overpower. Dicky trying to charge uh, channel one more time, but the working arm is money. A noobrak forced to flee for his life one more time, and they try to channel again. A noobrak interrupts at the very last minute, preventing the channel. Junkrat doing the same, but a noobrak once again is so low on life he just cannot step up. But the junkrat. Poe is so real in the top lane. Greymane actually able to get the kill on the Leo. And I think that is going to finally force Woodley to back up and see the objective. Woodley, or I found Vikings here. I really like the patience they're showing. Playing really within themselves, not overextending. Uh, it took them a long time to finally win this bottom lane fight, and they did. It took them a long time to finally secure... The Dragon Knight, uh, but they did. Good patience. And now they're uh, about a full level. Really stepping in this bottom lane. And Nubrak uh, is not the tankiest of tanks, and he's getting himself into some dicey spots here between the Dahaka Tongues and the Diablo, really pushing him around a little bit. And there it is. A Nubrak going down. Diablo really throwing him all over the place. So found Vikings on the verge of their heroic abilities. Four kills to none, leading in structure damage. And uh, really in control of the battlefield right now. So, heroic abilities online for the found Vikings. Go for the throat, lightning breath at its isolation, yes. Flailing swipe and dragon arrow. Not quite here for the Woodley. 
team seemed content to getting mercenaries all over the battlefield. Diablo, you're not in the bush. There you go, bud. <clears throat> Here we go. Now we have level 10s for the side of the Wood League, and they are coming in hard. Diablo getting isolated out one more time, forced to burrow charge to safety. But he is so low that Wood League has to back up and give up this bottom mercenary camp. It is going to be a wave of force in Tomb, Cocoon, Riptire, and Ancestral Healing. So going to be a little bit of a lull in the action until these uh, objectives spawn again. I imagine Vikings will go ahead and get on their Giants. Once again, top lane, uh, Greyman really picking on that Leo. The Haka is here as well, but with two showing in the top, great invade here by Woodley. Fantastic map awareness and macro pressure. And I don't think Found Vikings will be here in time to contest that. And they just went ahead and took that Siege Giant camp, well, because they could. Nice play there uh, by the Woodley. The Haka still using his global. He's in the top. He can come down at any time. Leoric doing his best to double soak as well. The big difference there, of course, is that uh, Brush Stalker is. The Haka can show up at any time. Leoric does not have such an advantage. So let's really wait for that Dahaka burrow. Another long brawl here in the bottom lane as these two teams just keep going at each other. You can see Greymane just off to the side, auto-attacking a noob, and there's a noob way out in no man's land. Oh, that's going to be a lot of damage going on to him. Greymane goes in with the go for the throat. Riptire comes out as a counter, gets instantly squashed. A Nubrak forced to back up. Both channels are secured by found Vikings. I don't think they're going to be able to immediately cap it. Leo and Dahaka really brawling in the top. Nobody, neither one of these guys is going to get the other off. Greyman is here in the mid. As long as Junkrat is here, he will not be able to channel this, though. Good Ancestral, because the Nubrak was in trouble. Lightning Breath completely zones away everybody. Uh, and that Lightning Breath is going to have a big effect on uh, Junkrat and Leeming in particular. They do not have very good health pools. And if he can get into a situation like that where he can just drop that Lightning Breath on those two heroes, that's going to get value just like you saw there. So Leo, AFK pushing in the top lane. The Found Vikings getting more and more structure damage, piling up with their second Dragon Knight in the game. Down goes mid fort. They will rotate to the bottom and secure bottom fort as well. Now the Auric is coming down. I'm not sure if he's coming down to join in the defense or just double soak. One of the things about Entomb, though, if you're off in the lane, you're whole, you know, getting soaked for your team, you're not going to get any value out of the Entomb. So at some point, Leoric, I think, has to make the flank. And there it is. There's the flank. Now, Dahaka does catch it out, forcing Korix to simply back up. Long Ghost Walk. They're trying to get the Entomb onto Greyman, and they land it. There's no Riptire, though. He actually uh, engages over it to get himself out of trouble. And Nubarak and Leoric both getting really worked down. Uh, Gilnan Cocktail unable to secure the kill, nor are they able to get it on Leoric. Woodleg walks away very bruised and battered, but alive. Found Vikings very much in control of this game now. So bottom mercenary camp secured by the found Vikings again. It's going to continue to put pressure in the bottom lane. 
along with those occasional catapults that are going to build up. But a level 16 advantage just around the corner for the found Vikings. And I want to see what they do with that 16 advantage. How do they leverage that um, into opening up a win condition? Because they haven't quite done that yet, but it's pretty close. Um, but in Wood League, they need to make something happen here and soon, and it's not going to be before 16. So they need to tread water until about a 16, 19, 16, 18 point, and they've got to force something decisive before 20. That's that's the play for Wood League. You, you play a little bit of Ring Around the Rosy until you get to the 16, 17 split, and then hopefully you force something there. So it looks like uh, both teams going to contend to simply trade and race. Um, I think down Vikings with the Greymane, they're going to burn this faster, yeah. Um, they're going to get through this top camp faster than Woodley will get through the bottom port, I should say. Actually, it's pretty close. Pretty close. The, well, how that works out for Woodley, though, is it gets them to 16. They do not have a... An option to fight down now. Whereas Found Vikings maybe could have forced something into that 16-15 range if they wanted it. Um, once Leo was done clearing out top, maybe you'll see these two teams collide. But Wood League, unless they get a cheeky pick, they can see each other right there. Unless they get a cheeky pick, they do not want to fight this. They need to catch somebody in rotation or bring Leoric down here. Uh, because a 5-on-4, they've already done this exact same thing three, four times, or at least twice. Now, a Tomb, or a Cocoon onto the Stukov. There is the Rip Tire and the Entomb on top of it. This is the best engage that Wood League has had this whole game. Hanzo going down, but Lightning Breath doing so much work. I think that would have gone much worse for Found Vikings if... Uh, the Lightning Breath wasn't just melting the squishy heroes. But uh, first blood of the game for Wood League. They get a nice Cocoon and Tomb kind of rip tire combo there. Junkrat does secure bottom. Leoric is top. Anubrat getting chunked out again. Wood League will, I assume, tap and congregate here in the mid and try to use this very small window where they have numbers advantage to get the DK, but it won't matter. Dicky burrowing in, securing the bottom, and the window is now closed, at least for the DK, but Dibbles is very low. A orb missed, unfortunately. He will go down to drain hope. Stukov in trouble as well. They do catch him in an entomb, and down goes Stukov. Wood League is roaring back. Burrow charge does hit the gray main, and they get the, the uh, cocoon as well. Assist me pings coming out. Wood League. Coming up here to make sure they get this gray main. There's the stuns. There's the damage. Dragon arrow for peels. Is it enough? It is not. Now, Junkrat and Leeming are not here. They are doing other things. But a two-man advantage uh, for Wood League. Dahaka, once again, playing Ring Around the Rosie, will be able to... No, he's not going to do it. He could have secured it, but I think he was a little leery. And that's going to be the first Dragon Knight for Wood League. The last... Uh, I don't know, two minutes has really been all about Wood League. They went from zero kills to four. They've completely evened up the level, and they secured their first Dragon Knight of the game. They are now marching down the bottom lane with a minute 16 DK at full strength, and they're going to begin laying siege to the keep of the found Vikings. Anubrak, Rhaegar, not quite here yet. They're on their way. Wood League showing good patience, waiting for their teammates. Alright, so the siege has now begun. Minion waves are here. Both teams are here. 30 seconds left on the DK. Did Haka punt it uh, into his own keep? First tower goes down. Dragon Arrow catches four, but no follow up. There goes the Rip Tire. They can use it as a zoning. They can use it as damage. He needs to explode it because Greymane actually just auto attacked it down. Damage now going into the keep. I don't think they're going to be able to finish it. And Tomb goes out, doesn't catch any, but it's zoning. Wood League may have overstayed there in trouble. Li Ming goes down. Rhaegar caught by the Dahaka tongue. They go down. That was a little bit ambitious. Uh, they really went hard into that. And now we're going to have a counter siege. 
uh, by the found Vikings. With about 30 seconds, at least 35 seconds, before Woodley can get their full team spawn, they need to burn this and burn this fast. Leoric actually baited them away from the uh, giant camp. That's a nice little play there by Corix to uh, keep his team safe while they secure the giants. 15 seconds till the members of Wood League are up. Spooky Ghost Walk for the damage reduction. Going out onto pretty much all the members of the Found Vikings. All the members of the Found Vikings are up now. And they're on the battlefield level 20s, right around the corner for the Found Vikings. Considering how many heroes they lost, that went about as well for Wood League as you could guess. And Tomb does not hit anybody. Rip Tire catches three. Camp is stolen away by the Found Vikings. And in the meantime, level 20s are here for our number one seeded Vikings. The shrines awaken once more. Who will wield the Dragon Knight's ancient strength? Oh, this will be good. So in a game that for the first uh, 12 minutes to 15 minutes or so was really all the found Vikings, 18 minutes in the game, into the game, it is anybody's game. Both teams have all their keeps up. Both teams have bottom lane open. Both teams have level 20. There goes all the damage into the Haka, but Anubarak gets absolutely obliterated. Lightning Breath gonna get so much value. Diablo traded for Anubarak and Greycar, Greymane, Leo, everybody going down. Leaming resets helped a lot there, and then she smashes Hanzo. Is Dahaka going to go down as well? It's going to be close. The silence probably saved Dahaka there because the reset might have been good. Concussion Mine is there. The poke is out. Silence onto Junkrat. This is a crazy. Now, Cavalor is going for the snipe here. They, they have vision on Haka. They know how low he is. Oh, and Stukov might be in trouble here. There he goes. Great shot by Cavalor on the Leaming. Nice rip tire by Droopy. Now they're going to back and reset. That is going to be a pretty big, um, actually... Oh, Junkrat, did he intentionally do that? Maybe? Because he's pretty low life. Um, that, that staggered death on the Stukov is a pretty big deal. Uh, they think Leoric's going to be able to get the Haka off this, is what they're thinking. And they, they might be right. Junkrat is there waiting. Uh, no, he decided to hearth back. But Stukov is still dead. So Dahaka actually burrowed away. He went to bottom. I kind of, with that with that window that they had, this 20 seconds right here, I kind of would have liked to have seen if they could have just gone and finished off that bottom keep. Like, it's so low. You don't really need the DK to do that. But uh, both teams back on the board. Sharking around for one another. Anubrak trying to get on the gray main. He actually catches Dahaka instead. And here we go. Anubrak getting chunked again. Gets the early ancestral. The uh, Entomb goes out onto gray main, who's also cocooned. Dahaka actually gets concussion mined in. This is very scattered from both sides. That healing totem really got a lot of value, though. Um, but Cocoon and Entomb actually overlapped each other. And uh, unfortunately, neither got a lot of value, and Anubrak has to back up. Yeah, Anubrak is going so hard in these fights, he's getting just absolutely obliterated. And that Ancestral is coming out early to keep him up. Uh, but he's taking so much poke going in that it's uh, making it really tough for him to take these engagements. However, Invade coming out. Both teams know it. And here we go again. There's the Buried Alive, it catches two. There's the Rip Tire on the backside, trying to get the Grey Mane almost, but not quite. He turns onto a Nubarak. He is not able to kill him yet. There he goes. Woodley desperate for one, just one reset, but Rhaegar is actually silenced. They do finally get the Grey Mane at two for one as Droopy just poking away on the backside. Actually, it's a point-blank dragon arrow, scatter arrow, all of the auto attacks. 
He's very low. Rhaegar able to keep him up. But uh, with a DK here, this could mean trouble for the Wood League. Uh, and, and they know they have no way to contest this. With uh, double Siege Giants and a Kata in the bottom lane. Wood League is going to have to play this just right to uh, keep this game alive. But they're actually not going bottom. They're going right through the mid lane. A little bit surprised. Um, I figured they would just pile on top of that huge wave bottom. The question is, are they going to try to core or are they going to double keep? Now they're going straight to the core. Greymane, not here. Anubarak, not here. The Greymane might be a bigger issue because he's their best core damage. Um, of course, excluding the DK. Core going down 80%, 70%. Alamo mode, desperation here for Wood League. They do get the Stukov. Core at 40%. Diablo is cocooned 30%. It's gonna be close, 20%. Leeming goes down. Dragon Arrow doesn't hit, 23%. Members of the Found Vikings falling all over the place, 12%. It is a team wipe core at 12%. Wood League manages to hold off, but what can they do with it? What can they do with this time that they have? Not too much, but they need to do uh, something as it's four to two numbers on the battlefield. With all three keeps down and their core at 12%, they have to be aggressive. They have to make something happen. I don't really know. Actually, I do know. It's this keep right here. That's what Wood League needs to be going after, if nothing else, to help offset some of the pressure. A uh, Junkrat could have almost done that on his own. Instead, they're going to leave Leo and Rhaegar back. They're going to be permanently on catapult duty. Going to grab this bottom bruiser camp, hoping, hoping that will finish the uh, bottom keep. And now are they going to go on to Giants? Maybe? So Wood League is going to be playing on the back foot. And they have to be aggressive. Here's the thing is they have to find and they cannot be passive. The only way to victory for Wood League here is they need to win multiple team fights. They cannot macro. They need to find the found Vikings and kill them. That is their only path to victory. And this is why once they're on this side of the map at 12%, this may be already be too late. Wood League is not quite here yet. They are coming. If they get onto this core, it's going to be a close thing. Dragon Arrow catches two. The uh, Cocoon goes on to Greymaid. There's the Buried Alive. One reset, and Li Ming will pop off. There is one. There is two. There is three. All right, Wood League, you're still up. You're alive, guys. What are you going to do with this time? They are able to oh, interrupt. They do interrupt the back from Dickie. Also, worth noting, in the bottom lane, those giants did get the keep. Leoric has to stay back here. These catapults at 25 minutes into the game will absolutely obliterate. Um, what is the plan? Are they going to try to end? Oh, they're going to try to end. Now, if they get a kill here, they, this is doable. This is doable if they get a kill. Leo has to stay back on guard duty. Everybody else is here. About 15 seconds till the found Vikings will be up for defense. Core, 80 80%, 70%, 60, falling fast. 10 seconds till the found Vikings will be up 30%. And game number two, ladies and gentlemen, after back to back, absolutely epic core defenses going over to the wood league forcing a game three with the number one seeded found vikings wow absolutely wow you guys are on a minute delay but believe me i'll be able to tell when you get there because uh, chat's gonna go absolutely crazy
Um, wow. Wow. I gotta catch my breath. That was a game. That just happened. And we're not wasting any time. Found Vikings, they don't need time to catch their breath. They instantly picked Tomb of the Spider Queen. Their choice for Battlefield number three. We are just waiting for Wood League to trickle in here. So hang tight for just a minute. All right, guys, we are here for game three. And I thought they were ready, but they're not. So I'm going to put the BRB screen right, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. All right, well, after that game, too, I had to fill up my coffee, feed the cats, so they didn't bother me. Because if that was game two, and we're going into game three, I had to be ready to be focused in for uh, what could be an absolute thriller. All right, we are here in draft. And once again, Banana coming out by the Wood League. Not going to see her this set. Who are the Found Found Vikings going to uh, gonna take out of this game? And it's going to be Garrosh again.
So Johanna Band coming out by Woodleg. Not normally a fan of Johanna Band, but on Tomb, she's really, really strong. Uh, the wave clear and rotations that she brings is particularly impactful on Tomb of the Spider Queen. And a Keldos band coming out by the Found Vikings. So once again, Anub, Diablo both make it through. Who does Wood League prioritize with that first pick? Who are they going to drag grab? Who is so important for them to pull off the upset? It's going to be J-Mac on the Diablo. Diablo is really strong, but I wonder if that also isn't a denial as well. Uh, PJ Tim last game was a pretty big, <clears throat> pretty impactful on Diablo. The lightning breaths, a couple of them were really big. So I wonder if that's a combination of uh, first picking Diablo, but also first denying Diablo, kind of both uh, went into their mindset there. And we've seen him ban out by Wood League every map before now. But there he is, Asmodan and ETC for the Found Vikings. And there's a Gul'dan and a Tyrande. Gul'dan wave clear spectacular. Horrify is a playmaker. Tyrande pairs so well with Diablo. So Hanzo being banned away from themselves. The Found Vikings have had Hanzo in back-to-back -back games. This time they're going to ban him. And who does Woodley want to take away? A lot of options. A lot of options. J9 and ETC go really well together. And Alarak, again, so three straight games we've had uh, Wood League use their mid ban to get rid of the Alarak. Um, if that's a, a kind of pocket pick from Found Vikings, Alarak is very all or nothing, but can be very oppressive if he's played well. So if that's something that the Found Vikings have found success with, I, I understand that. And back on the Alexstrasza for the Vikings and the Arthas. So last two picks for the Wood League. Who are they gonna grab? What's gonna be their upset comp? It's gonna be Rainer and Leoric. So very standard, very straightforward comp for the Wood League. <clears throat> Got to ability damage, auto attack damage, a main tank, an off tank, slows, some stuns, some heals, very standard. Leoric slows, of course, will go well with Rainer's ace in the hole, assuming that's what he's going to take. And it's going to be Maiev. So a little bit of spice there at the end. Found Vikings pulling out the Maiev for the last pick. All right, game three, ladies and gentlemen, between the Found Vikings and Woodley. Going to be played on Tomb of the Spider Queen with an Asmodan on Found Vikings. If you're the Woodley, 
I do not want this game going uh, 28 minutes or whatever it went last game. Because that Asmo, as he stacks and stacks, he gets to be so oppressive, aggravating at the end. The globe's just coming down and chunking, especially if it gets on like a Gul'dan or a Taronda. One of those globes coming down in the late game will absolutely wreak havoc on what uh, Wood League is trying to do. That's why it's not uncommon to see the Asmodan bans, um, especially in like, you know, regular at home games, not competitive, just because um, so oppressive. All right. Game number three. The Found Vikings. We have Cyan on Asmodan, PJ Tim on ETC, Dickie on Arthas, Sailor Sky on Alex Straza, and Contender on the Maya. The red team off of their pretty epic game two victory, forcing a game three. J Mac on Diablo, Rabbi on Taronda, Cavlor on Gul'dan, Corix on Leoric, and Droopy on Rainer. That is Woodley. So, teams kind of skirmishing in the mid lane, not too much happening with that. Uh, double Tether does get Rainer out of place, Lunar Player for Peels, but the uh, Howling Blast follow-up is on the point. He is able to penetrating round himself to safely and kind of juke the uh, globe there. The hitbox on that globe is fairly generous, uh, but Droopy able to escape despite being pulled into a pretty unfortunate spot. You know, the uh, ETC uh, mosh pit with the Warden's Cage and the Asmo Dunk could be pretty difficult to deal with if they land a big one. So the rotational advantage slightly in the Found Viking's favor. Uh, Leoric is in the bottom. Is he rotating up? Yeah, he's going to rotate up to help catch mid. So his team can uh, catch back up in the rotation. They do get Asmo pinned out a little bit. Lunar Flare is able to hit, but the healing circle is uh, abundance is on the other side. Cyan is able to get out safely. No soak missed by either side due to Leoric picking up mid lane and then rotating bottom. Diablo is going to sneak in his 11 gems. Nice turn in there by j -Mac. ETC power slides in. He's going to get put under the towers and then flipped again with no way to get himself out of there. PJ Tim uh, kind of put himself in a rough spot, but they are able to parlay that into a Tyrande kill as Maya followed up on the backside of that. Uh, Diablo put all his uh, all his potential peel into trying to isolate out the ETC, and Tyrande paid for it on the other end with the follow-up to the power slot. Go check on our solo laners. Uh, Leoric should win this um, if he hits his drain hopes. That's the key. You've gotta hit your drain hopes. Uh, if Arthas sits here and tries to trade, he's just gonna eat away all of his mana. Um, although landing the Howling Blast will help, and Maev is here as well. No escape for Corix. There goes the teleport and the tether and the fan of knives. Leoric goes down. That is a lot of gems uh, there, but uh, Taronda and Diablo are there to pick up many of them. Good rotation by the Maya to come pick up that Leoric kill. Nice uh, aggressive initiation there by ETC, and they get the Rainer this time. Last time it was Taronda, this time it's Rainer. Uh, those two heroes, as well as Gul'dan, are going to be really vulnerable to the Power Slide, Face Melt, Umbral Bind combination. 
that found Vikings has here to uh, initiate their pickoffs. Diablo once again sneaking in 13 gems. Uh, both sides uh, have enough to turn in. Yes, exactly for Wood League. So let's see who gets those uh, turn those gems, the little spider butts in first. Now found Vikings is actually on their bruiser camp. Power slide onto Diablo and then a uh, defensive face mount. ETC and Asmodan staying on the double rotation. Leoric actually turned in the gems along with Tyrond, it looks like. And first Webweaver phase, despite 3-0 in the kills department, will go over to Woodley. Leoric goes back to his bottom lane. The rest of the Wood League is prioritizing top. Heals this time to try to keep uh, Gul'dan alive, but there's the teleport. Lunar Flare used defensively as appeal. I think Rabbi is going to be doing that a lot this game. Uh, but Maya wasn't quite able to get into a position to umbral bind that Gul'dan. Uh, mid lane is pushing unopposed right now as both of the foremans are here in the top trying to push in these uh, spiders. Fan of Knives getting plenty of resets. A nice flip out of the heal. Really nice play there by J-Mac to not let ETC get the free heal there. And as a result, he's eating a lot of damage. Dragon Queen forced to be popped. Great disengage by Woodley. Which as soon as they saw the Dragon Queen, they rotated away. No reason whatsoever to fight into that. Bottom lane, Leoric is getting a fair amount of work done here. This wall is, is dead. Arthas is forced to leave. Uh, Maiev is has to come down here. Now this one will be a little different because Leoric is at full health as opposed to half dead. So not a bad first turn in uh, by the Wood League. However, they are still down about a half a level in XP and found Vikings sitting on 78 gems. If they were to turn in and have a clean turn in phase, they would probably have close enough to back to back after the turn in was over. So teams playing a little passive, kind of hanging out till uh, level 10s, which will be here first by Found Vikings first. And that's why if you're Leoric though, you have to hit uh, your Drain Hope. Once that was missed, you are so vulnerable. Uh, and Found Vikings knew it. They're trying so hard to let Contender get his 37 gems in, but Dicky is really getting melted. Uh, enough so that they are able to get Maiev turned in. Webweaver phase going to the Found Vikings right before they're going to hit level 10 and have an advantage. So pretty good timing on that turn-in for the Found Vikings. They do get the Rainer. I missed it. I'm a terrible caster. I imagine that was probably Power Slide into Maiev again. Heroics are on board. It is Summon Syndragosa. For Arthas, I imagine we're going to see it momentarily. Life Binder, Warden's Cage, Black, or Pool of Sin, is that what it's called now? Tide of Sin. There's the Warden's Cage. It does catch two. Fan of Knives getting resets. Wood League getting wrecked. Two more go down. Wood, uh, found Vikings taking control of this game. Uh, ETC hasn't shown yet. I would be surprised if it wasn't Mosh Pit. Um, but there are enough interrupts coming out. For a wood league, you have Horrify and uh, the shotgun by Rainer penetrating round. Heroics for wood league, Horrify, Entomb, Rainer's Raiders, Lightning Breath, and Shadow Stalk. Now here comes Leo on the flank. He has that Entomb, isn't able to get it on everyone there, instead focusing on burning what is a huge wave that is built up here. Uh, still no kills for the Wood League, about a full level behind, two forks behind. Uh, this game so far very reminiscent of game two with the Found Vikings controlling the early game. Now with split engagement, Diablo and Toronto went one way, Leoric and Gul'dan went another. Trying to force them off, I would have kind of liked them both to either engage from the same direction or not. If the Found Vikings just turned on the flankers, they would have been in trouble. Now no army. Uh, for Arthas and the life binder a smidge smidge late not able to save him great vault to contender out of trouble 
I kind of expected a mosh pit there. That would have been a four-man mosh pit, and it is up. Uh, but uh, DJ Tim opting not to pull the trigger. Arthas goes down in the first kill of game three here for Woodley. So Bruiser Camp picked up by the Found Vikings. Pretty close to instantly melted away. Now Arthas is in the flank here. Leoric is not here. Taronda is howling blasted. She is not going to get out of this. If you get a free initiation on Trost, and then you get the Umbral Bind into a four-man mosh pit. Fan of knife, fan of knives, fan of knives, fan of knives. Four members of Wood League going down. And then the immediate boss rotation. This is going to be a boss turn-in play by the found Vikings. The Umbral Bind into the four-man mosh pit, beautifully executed by the found Vikings. Um, and the fact that they were able to get to Taronda first meant that that engagement was lost before it began. So Boss will be secured by the found Vikings. Wood League too far away to contest they also are sitting on just enough gems to turn in as well. And now if you're a Wood League, what do you do to respond to this? You're down a level and a half. You're about to lose another turn and boss barreling down the down the top lane. Oh yeah, Asmodan is still stacking, scaling, turning into that late game monster that he is. Now, last game, it looked like Wood League was absolutely down and out. This game looks like that as well. Raynor just lost about 30% of his health on one globe. So the question is, if you're a Wood League, do you have back-to-back -back miracle comebacks? Or is this going to be it? Now, Leoric is looking for something. Members of Wood League are here. And this is a same talent to your fight. If you're going to take a fight, this is it. They go on to the ETC and Tomb catches only Arthas. Horrify splits up the engagement. Arthas with no army dead getting chunked. But this time, Lifebinder fills him right back up. Dragon Queen comes out. Wood League will disengage. Oh, I am a terrible caster. You know what? I didn't even mention it. But uh, Wood League managed to make a nice play and actually prevent the turn-in by Vikings by getting a turn-in of their own, really mitigating that damage. Um, I was so concerned with the possibilities of the turn-in boss that I didn't even realize Wood League actually prevented the boss. But these two teams continue to brawl, dunk on Diablo. Here comes Summon Sindragosa. It does catch Tehran. She might be in trouble. Shadowstalk comes out. Nice play by Rabbi. This fort is shut down. Wood League in full retreat. Lunar Flare actually catches two. And now the re-engage after this momentum has been cut down. No 16. Here comes Jimmy Jr. The Entomb onto Arthas. Lightning Breath. All the damage. Globe hits a couple, but it will not matter. Nice re-engage there by Wood League to find a kill on Arthas. And Leoric is not done yet. Lifebinder with its three and a half second cooldown is back up to fill up ETC. Woodley gonna back off and reset. That was great patience and a fantastic re-engage by Woodley there. Um, top lane is actually slowly building up too. I imagine Asmo's gonna go stack off of that like crazy right now, right? There we go. Asmo down now at the point where he is absolutely one-shotting minion waves as we just saw. So Wood League just needs to be patient. They're probably not going to be able to contest this turn in. And they aren't. They do, however, get a counter fort kill in the bottom lane. And now they have to defend this. Found Vikings grouping in the top lane. Sindragosa will be up in 10 seconds. And the timing will be about right for them to take down this top keep which has no walls and will shortly be disabled, as well as have some web weavers pushing down the top lane with it. Woodley desperate to get their level 16 talents. 
Um, I don't know if they can defend this, to be honest, at the keep. There goes the Ghost Walk, trying to reduce the damage. Globe doesn't hit anybody. Watch Arthas, you're going to see Cindy come out, and there it is. Catches Tyrande and Gul'dan. Uh, Maiev absolutely gets split off by the Horrify. The uh, Life Binder early, but fills her right back up. That's a Mosh Pit if he wants it, but he doesn't. Warden's Cage catches two. There's the Mosh Pit into the Warden's Cage, but it is instantly interrupted. Wood League is playing this so well. Lightning Breath is huge, but the Abundance keeps everybody up. Alex Straza does not get away. Finally goes down. The Keep goes down, but Wood League does not care. They're going to get a 3 for nothing. That is, I think, the best fight. Wood League has had this series. What a fantastic defense. So patient into the Cindergosa. And now they have to make something happen with that. They don't quite have turn in. There is no boss on the board. I want to see them invade. Invade this camp. Go get him. You got 20 seconds where it's five on two. And that's what they're going to do. But only three of them are here. Where's Raynor? Where's Leor? Get in here, boys. Here comes the invade. They go on to Arthas. He is low. He's getting isolated out. And that's going to be a staggered death onto the Arthas. And a huge camp invade by Wood League. Nice play there. They will have turn in momentarily as Leoric is off collecting those gems. So it's going to be a staggered Arthas death. An invaded camp and a turn in as soon as Woodleg decides that they want that. Flashes of game two have to be coming back if you're the found Vikings. A game you controlled throughout and then at the end it just slipped through your fingertips. And this feels just a little bit like that. It's still early though. The orc needs to get his gems in here. Otherwise, this turn-in will not work, and he's going to get it in the top lane, or will he? It's going to be close, and he does. He does. <laughs> However, Arthas is up. Eight gems still need to be turned in by Woodley. I'd kind of like Leork to come down here and maybe fight in this spell armor if you can swing it. Um, or just send Raynor. Oh, no, Maiev is down there. Say so sneak Raynor, but I don't think they're going to be able to do that, too. Here we go. The orc sitting in the bush waiting for the flank. Uh, Arthas is a vulnerable target, as we've seen with uh, Sindragosa. Instead, there's the Entomb, splits the team, but doesn't isolate anybody inside it. The teleport is there for the Warden's Cage, but he doesn't pull the trigger. The orc able to teleport away, and there's the Disengage. They didn't buy quite enough time for Raynor to turn in, though. And uh, simply resetting is the Woodley, and that's a great call. The Found Vikings aren't anywhere close to turning in, so they can slow play this a little bit and wait for their opportunity. Leoric goes back, does a little lane maintenance at the top. Boss is up, so if uh, if Woodley can actually get a decisive team fight here, they could actually boss turn and question mark. There goes Korok with that extended Wraith Walk. Appears kind of right in the middle of the team. Dragon Queen popped really early. I want to just see Woodley just disengage out of this and wait it out. Korix is kind of in there, though. Forced to Ghost Walk away. He is very low. And Horrify used defensively. Woodley, all they need to do is reset here. Wait out Dragon Queen and go in again. And that's nice play. There by the Woodley. Of course, the Asmo pressure will start to build. Those globes will hurt. Those generals of hell will push in these lanes. 20 is online uh, in just a few moments for the found Vikings. So window of opportunity closed momentarily for the Wood League. They're going to have to wait, get level 20, and uh, try one more time. But found Vikings still not anywhere close to turn in. They are posturing the boss area. They know Raynor is alone. He pops that speed boost. Get that penetrating round. Howling Blast hits him. ETC gets him. Raynor is going down. Going down. But Leoric does get the turn in. So a uh, Pyrrhic victory. Uh, they got the turn in they finally wanted. But Raynor was just a little bit too far forward. And uh, with all the CC on the side of the found Vikings, once they got a hold of him, he was not getting away. I don't know how much value they're going to get out of this turn in. The lanes are pushed really far back. They're going to be down a man. Um, and I think Found Vikings, honestly, is just going to clean this up for free. So the uh, win condition for the Wood League here 
uh, after this is all cleaned up is they need to find oh oh the flank is here Gul'dan is in trouble Gul'dan is going to go down there is the umbral bind pulls him in horrify does not get any value Leoric doing everything he can to hold members away Gul'dan is surprisingly still up but not yet and that's the second time that uh, Vikings has recognized an overextension by Woodley. First they get the Rainer, now they get the Gul'dan. What I started to say was, if you're the Woodley, once you get all five members up, and this is uh, all cleared out, uh, the, play the way you win this is you have a long way to your next turn in. Win a team fight, get the boss, march to core. Um, Vikings doesn't even need to get the boss part of it. If they win a team fight, they just end. Uh, so let's see what's going to happen here. Gul'dan is not here. Kind of aggressive posturing from the Woodley. Are they going to try to bait Asmodan? Are they going to sit at the boss? They're going to boss bait. They're going to try to find someone, anyone. But nobody is around. Gul'dan not going to be up for another 10 seconds or so. Both teams do have level 20s, though. And found Vikings are finally very close to turn in. Not quite, uh, but they're very close. <clears throat> so found Vikings are going to collect enough gems in the top lane here in a moment. Both sides have grabbed their bruisers. Now this is the kind of split rotation that I really don't want to see if uh, found vikings goes in but they do catch two and the buried alive buried alive into the horrify into the lightning breath arthas goes down etc goes down death metal does not catch anybody and once again the late game team fights are all wood league you have to wonder is this the buried alive getting so much value these last two games slow goes on to contender they are not able to get him this needs to be an insta boss call 45 seconds of five on three they need to all go up to boss and get that boss. Turn in is not even relevant, to be honest. But Leoric is actually going to stay down here and prevent turn in, I guess. Yeah, buried alive, man. Both this game and last, it just gets. It's so powerful, so impactful, such a playmaker. And Leoric goaltended, interrupted the turn in. And then simply Ghost walks away. Nice play by there, the Wood League. I said, don't even worry about the turn in. They said, Mongoose, you don't know what in the world you're talking about. Uh, boss is secured, as is turn in. Members of the Found Vikings will be here momentarily. Diablo trying to catch somebody, though, but they're mounted. He is not going to get anybody, or he does. He does get Asmo. Q, E, Q, Asmo, isolated. And Tomb actually catches Maev. They get Asmo on the backside. Contender forced to run for his life. Boss pushing in the top lane. Uh, however, look at these lanes here. Bottom is going to have Giants, Katas, uh, Web Weavers, Mid, Web Weavers. Uh, I think Wood League really needs to come back and do some lane maintenance here. Yeah, and, they, and that's what they're doing. They do not want to lose two keeps here. That is not going to be uh, get for it. But the, but the keep in the top lane going down to the boss. So structures even for now if Wood League can even this out. Why, Leoric? No, don't forget about top. They just gave away mid keep for free. I think they could have saved both. However, top keep going down. Both sides now have a very strong win condition. And the way these post-20 team fights have been going, um, games two and game three... Leoric hits a buried and live, and they win off the back of the team fight. That's how it's been going. And if you're found Vikings, you're looking at that bottom keep, and you're like, boy, this looks juicy. Look at how low that bottom keep is. But let's see how these teams clash here. 23 minutes into the game, two marathon games in game two and game three. Now, Wood League is fairly close to a turn-in. If they get it, if they manage to force a turn in, that would be very strong. Um, but I want to see both these teams grouped up together. You absolutely cannot get caught out alone. A stag or death here for either one of these teams would be would be absolutely devastating. 
Now here comes ETC posturing. You do need to be aware, if you're the Wood League, of that death metal. That death metal can be really... Whew. A good death metal can really turn a game around. Um, especially, like, to counter an Entomb. The, uh, the Buried Alive, if the whole team piles in on top of it, Death Metal can be very strong. Globe only catches the Gul'dan. Woodling's actually been doing a pretty nice job about not letting those Globes chunk out two, three heroes. It's usually only hitting one. There we go. Oh, Gul'dan is in trouble. Howling Blast catches him. Mayev goes in. The Underworld Horrify used defensively. Rainer is there to try to keep but they get the Buried Alive again! And the... Oh! The Life Binder keeps Mayev up. It was going to be a close thing. Now the Mosh Pit catches three. They are unable to interrupt it, but they're unable to kill anybody on the back of it. Everybody is still alive. ETC going to go down to the dot. Death Metal doesn't catch anybody. And despite how that looked, Wood League wins a late game team fight one more time. Two kills to one. They do have turn in. Bound Vikings find themselves on their back foot in the late game one more time. Gul'dan was caught out, I thought for sure they were in trouble. But uh, the response from his teammates in that game was so beautiful. And I think my client just crashed. No! We're going to try to get back in here, ladies and gentlemen. Hang tight. It only takes about a minute. All right, we are officially rejoining. I am so sorry about this. I've been working all season to figure out why it does this every now and again, and it's really annoying, and I don't know why. But we are rejoining, we're reconnecting. And let's see where we're at when we're in this game. I imagine web weavers are going to be pushing for the side of the Wood League, and they are. We got back just in the nick of time. Web Weavers are here. They are pushing on the core. There goes Leoric, buried alive. All of the heroics for Wood League are up. Uh, Mosh Pit will be up in a moment, but that's the best uh, globe we've seen from Found Vikings. It catches three, but uh, Wood League, a little tentative there. Don't want to give their advantage. They've worked so hard to get, and there's the globe catching two. So with the turn in, Wood League only gets one keep and on this game goes. Now 27 minutes in and this bottom keep still hanging on with but a smidgen of help, health. Boss can win it for either team. I don't think you can stray quite this far from Boss. Uh-oh. Wood League, no. They're too far to respond, ladies and gentlemen. They're in the bottom lane. If they show, if Found Viking sniffs this out, they can get boss. But Leo is actually here to scout this out. And now Wood League is starting to trickle up. Leo here watching the boss. Wood League is scattered throughout the map. Neither team really close to turn in. And both teams setting a bush party. Leo... Sitting in this bush, they know they're there. They're looking for found Vikings with an owl. Not biting, clearing out. Leo continues to watch the boss. Now they're showing in a bottom lane. Is Woodley gonna make the inverse boss call? Neither team really trying to make something happen. They're both very tentative. It's like they're afraid to lose, but there's the boss call. This is gonna be close. If Woodley gets this boss, it will be game. Found Vikings hasn't sniffed it out yet. Now they're on their way up. Boss below 50% health. It's going to be close. Here they come. They know they're on the boss. 10% boss is going to go over to the Wood League. Have they pulled it off, ladies and gentlemen? This is going to be a base race. Found Vikings has to hearth back, or do they? It's going to be close. We're going to end with the base race. Now, Found Vikings are more decisive. They're on this first. I don't think... 
Woodley realizes that this is going to be it. That is game over to the found Vikings. They rotated faster on the back door with the boss. It was there. It was there for Wood League. All they had to do was get the boss and Hearth back, but they were indecisive. They cleared out the lanes. Props to the found Vikings. They recognized, well, we can't defend the boss. We, we go end. That was their only way for them to win at that point. Wow. What a series. What a set. Found Vikings able to pull it out in a goosebump inducing series. Very, very entertaining. Wow. Um, I, we, of course, want to see if we can get one of those guys in here. That was uh, a really, really fun. Really fun set. We're gonna see if we can get one of the members of the Found Vikings, if they can recover from that, in here for an interview. And uh, really hats off to both of these teams for a fantastic set. Wood League, you watched that set, all three of those games, that did not, absolutely did not look like a number one seed versus a number eight seed. And that was a brawl, very evenly matched, 100% could have gone either way. And heartbreaker for Wood League, they had that game won. If they would have bossed and hearthed back, they could have, they could have won that game. Boss would have won it for him. Whew. One for the ages. Uh, this is the uh, second day of the NGS playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Shows you what kind of a <laughs> playoffs we could be in for. Most of these uh, divisions have been very competitive. And this one in particular. Hello. Hello. Who, who do we got? It's Contender. How are you doing, Contender? Maybe. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I don't have my thingy set on the right. You can't hear me because I'm terrible. Now you can hear me. I had the mic set, mic set wrong. Contender, oh. how's it going, man? Really good. Stressful match. Yeah, you think? <laughs> um... Before we go into specific games, you guys catch your breath yet? Maybe just kind of talk about what it was like going through a set like that, because that was, uh, that was pretty crazy. Uh, it was just keep the team level-headed the whole time. Don't get stressed, because that's when you make sloppy plays. All right. <laughs> it, it's a very simple, simple strategy. I mean, every fight we go into, we don't go into it like if we lose this we're gonna lose the match it's every fight's the same to us we try to keep level heads throughout the match sure so how quickly at the end because you guys it seemed like you insta called when you realized they got the boss um straight to core because you know bosses you guys can't defend boss um did you kind of expect to burn it that fast or did you think they would come back and defend it what was that game three uh take us through the last maybe 20 30 seconds of that well, I had a feeling that they were trying to bait boss. I didn't know they were actually doing boss. So I called for us to go down to get that bot keep because we have so and we could easily do it and then maybe push. But once boss popped, um, we waited a second for them to push up in lane, which made them their delay. Let us all catch up to each other. Like, because I don't know if you noticed me on my Ev, I was a little ahead of everyone. It let us catch all up and go in at once. And then sure. with Asmodan, you can burn that core so quickly. Yeah, for sure. Especially when he's fully stacked. 
Yeah, because I was, I was saying in the cast, when you guys, guys watch it, if they would have gotten Boss and Hearth back, I think you guys would have been in a really rough spot. Um, oh, yeah. That's but... why we waited a minute to make sure they were pushing up in lane. We saw them on the map, and then we went in. Yeah, because at, at that point, that's the only play for you guys. You guys have to go to core, regardless of what they do. You kind of have to do it. Uh, but it was really yes. really heads up not to show that that's what you were doing until they showed first, you know? Um, let's go back to game two, because that was a pretty bananas finish to that. How do you guys get up off the mat for a strong th game three performance after two just brutal core defenses and a, and a comeback win like that? What was the, what was comms like? What are you guys thinking? Uh, kind of take me through that. Uh, it's the same as what I said before. We just keep a level head. Each match is a new match. We went into it just thinking it was like our first match. We, after the first match, we